Good morning, church. Come on and stand with us. You know, the Word of God says in Romans this, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So this morning, we want to start off by saying that we believe God today. We believe what His Word says about our lives. We believe what His Word says about every detail of what we live out to His glory and to our joy. So this morning, I want you to join us as we lift up praise and honor, saying, man, God, we believe you. Regardless of what we see in front of us, we believe you in Jesus' name. Come on, lift up a shout to him today.
Let's say this, church. Who's tasted that? But never known defeat. Who's never left? A fight without victory. Who is this King of glory? Our God so strong and mighty.
on, say this right here. Say, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, come, come on, on, give me another the praise. Shout of praise if you agree with the Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. The blessing of God. Father, we bless you this morning in this house. We say thank you for life. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for the work of the cross. Thank you that you redeemed us when we were lost. We deserved hell, Father, and you gave us heaven, gave us eternal life, gave us purpose, reason, a destiny in which to live. And today in this place, we give you all praise. We give you all honor. Father, we say there is no one that deserves praise but you alone. You are our God, our Lord, our King, our Redeemer, our Savior. And so we bless you today. Come on, let's give one more shout in this place. Hallelujah. Bless you, mighty God. Woo. Hallelujah. Hey, why don't you uh, greet somebody before you're seated and uh, make them feel good. Tell them how beautiful they look. And then you may be seated. Amen, amen. Great to see your smiling faces this morning. For, uh, for all the men that missed this last Wednesday night, we missed you. We had a great time. And uh, I can't believe how much pizza these men can eat. <laughs> Cost me a fortune. Ate it all, too. After it was all over, I asked somebody, is there any pizza left? Can I have one slice? Because I can't eat before I speak. And they brought me a slice of mushroom pizza. That is the most disgusting <laughs> thing. <laughs> Who puts mushroom on pizza? Wow. Well, anyhow, it's great to see you this morning. I'm excited about bringing the word. Uh, before we do today, we have some special guests with us all the way from Peru. And uh, they got here a few minutes ago. It's been a crazy trip. And uh, I, I told uh, Jose this morning and his beautiful wife, Kat, that uh, some of our team actually still has PTSD from our trip to Peru <laughs> two and a half years ago. Not the actual trip there. Once we got there and started missions work, it was amazing. But it was the worst traveling experience of our entire life. It was it was horrible going, and it was horrible coming home. But uh, we got there, and we got back. But it's great to have Jose and Kat. Give it up to these guys this morning. Pastor George. Love you, sir. Hey, beautiful. What, what an introduction. Anybody want to come to Puta? <laughs> <laughs> we do, actually. <laughs> amen, amen. I saw Nick up here. I see Allie. I see Luke, I see, uh, I see Fred over there. Uh, if you joined us in Peru, can y'all just stand up real quick? We just want to acknowledge you. Thank y'all so much. Yeah, there's a bunch Rock of family. Them. Can y'all just, Woohoo! wow. Man. I think over 80 people, y'all have a seat. Over 80 people came and, and, and were with us in Puta, Peru. They were like, where is Puta? Everyone knows Lima, but where is Puta? It's, it's in the desert, it's very hot. I just want my wife to greet you guys this morning. Good morning, Rock family. We're just so very happy to be here with you all today. Wow. That's the quickest that, I've ever heard that, any wife. That's amazing. I'll give her the mic back soon, <laughs> you know. But truly, uh, we're really happy to be here. You know, I told Pastor George we're, we're coming through. We, uh, we actually have a home base in Texas, in Houston. But uh, we just want to come and just give him a hug and love on him and love on you guys because uh, we're excited about what God's doing. This is an end-time church. Can you all say Amen. This is an end time church. God is using this kind of church and many others just like it to really speak the truth without any fear. And I love that about The Rock. And so when, when we come here, we want to be a part of it. So we're just here to enjoy. We're here to hear the word. I don't want to miss a Sunday. And uh, I like Pastor George with hair. God bless you guys. Thanks, Jose. We are going to have lunch after service and uh, we're going to talk about a possible trip to Peru this summer. Uh, so all of you that went that want to go back and those of you that didn't go and wished you could have, this will be your opportunity. So uh, we're believing for uh, some doors to open and uh, we'll let you know about it. All right, we're in part two of the best is yet to come. Say that with me out loud. The best is yet 
to come. Say it personal. Say my best. My best is yet to come. So, Father, we bless you. We thank you for your word. And we ask your anointing to be on it greatly today. Touch lives, heal hearts, save souls, redeem those who are lost. Father, impart into us by the anointing today these words that are going to produce in us righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And I ask, Father, for your blessing just to be upon the word that's in my heart, the scriptures. Father, I just speak uh, peace over me right now against all the reaction to meds this morning. I'm just declaring life over me and freshness of mind in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Summary of last week, real quick. There's four things that I believe Holy Spirit is wanting to keep fresh in our thought process. And I don't know if they have the scriptures for these up there, but I I just want to throw them out there real quick again. We shared them last week. And um, it's four things from glory to glory, 2 Corinthians 3, 18 and Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Second one is in our life as believers, old things have passed away. And now we have a right to receive all new things in Christ Jesus. Can you say amen to that? The third one is my ladder is going to be greater than my former. Amen. You speak that prophetically. You're declaring it. My ladder is going to be greater. Why? Because the promise of God's word is that it is. Amen. And then uh, all of that summed up with this Philippians 4.13. I can do All things, or let me say it like this, I can do everything that Christ has put in front of me to do. I have the grace to do it. Why? Because his grace is sufficient. The Lord does not call you to do anything that he has not first graced you to do. Say amen to that. He's already graced you. So whatever it is, and and you know what? If you get frustrated with the Lord giving you a big vision, you can blame some of it on me because I've been asking the Lord to just instill in this house vision that's greater than us, that when we look at it, we get chill bumps and go, I don't know how I'm going to do that. His grace is sufficient. He's calling us to do something and to be something. I love what Pastor Jose just said concerning being an end time ministry where we believe, and I don't want you to take that contexture out of, because that, that sometimes said the wrong way. It's like, ooh, I don't want to be a part of end time. I want to be a part of Revelation 21 and 22. I mean, I want to be a part of that which the Lord's going to do in the latter days. So in that context, it is uh, a latter day ministry. So uh, I got through point one last week. That was great, right? So, and I, and I, and I started point two. So I'm going to jump back in the middle of point two. Uh, the f- point one was, I don't even remember it. Anybody remember what it was? Uh, what was it? Oh, choices. Thank you. Yeah, it is about the choices you make. All right, point two. I didn't put point one in my notes, so it's not there. Point two was no more distractions. Amen? Now, that's an that's a action you're going to have to take to make sure that you don't allow distractions that, that are going to hinder you from doing what God's called you to do. Every man, every woman, from the youngest to the oldest in this place, we live out our lives in both the spiritual and the practical. And the practical, obviously, as men, we got to take care of our families. We got to go to work. We got to do our jobs. We got to pay our bills on time. Somebody say amen to that. We pay our bills on time. We live a life of, of righteousness, of integrity, of godly character. All those things are a part of, of being a child of God. But in the midst of it, sometimes we can let some of those good things, practical things, rob us from what God is calling us to the higher calling. You remember the story when Jesus went in and had uh, a meal in, in Mary and Martha and Lazarus' house, and, and immediately uh, Mary plops down at the feet of Jesus and just soaking it in. And Martha, she's out about, she's running, she's making hot tea, she's bringing little triscuits and biscuits, you know, and, and uh, she's just scurrying around. And after a little bit, she gets mad, not at Jesus, She gets mad at Mary, and and, and she says, she goes, she stops the Lord in the middle of his teaching, (laughs) come on somebody, and says, Lord, don't you care that my sister is sitting there at your feet doing nothing, and I'm running around here making sure everybody's got pistachios and, and nuts and olives, 
And, and, and Jesus just looks at her and goes, Martha, Martha, Mary, she's doing the better thing. You can always serve pistachios, but you're not going to always have me. Isn't that right? And there are some times when we're scurrying around doing good work. Oh, this is good. This is for some of y'all. Scurrying around doing the good stuff for the Lord when he's wanting us to sit down and take a break. He's wanting us to breathe in his presence. He's wanting us to meditate on his scriptures, meditate on his word. You know, I don't know about you, those of you that are doing the Four Streams Bible reading with us this year. Uh, wow, that's a lot more reading than uh, uh, we did last year. And every once in a while, if you're not careful, you'll, you'll get tempted just to scurry through it real quick. And yet, man, it's times when you are reading the Word and you say, I've read this thing so many times I could almost quote it. And then the Lord speaks something to you out of it. And it's life. And, and I mean, it's fresh. It's just like, wow, this is, this is something for me today. And if we don't slow down a little bit, we just, we, we'll fly by it. So last week I gave you, I believe, John chapter 17, uh, verse 1 through 5, Jesus spoke in there and he said, uh, the hour has come. And then Mark chapter 14, 32 through 42, I'm not going to read these because uh, I got a lot of other reading to do this morning, but Here in this scripture, again, Jesus uh, has taken the disciples. He's at the latter end of his life. He's he's done everything. He's done all the ministry. He's uh, preached the good news. He's fed the hungry. He's uh, opened blind eyes. He's caused lame people to walk, uh, deaf people to hear, uh, lepers to be cleansed. He's he's stopped a few funerals in the in the process and raised some dead folks. And he's done all of these things. um, So. So that people would hear and respond to his word. And so he, he's been forewarning the disciples for a whole year. He's talking around the campfire and telling them what's going to happen. And yet they didn't get it. See, sometimes we get in the word and read the word and the Lord's telling us something and we don't get it. I mean, honestly, sometimes I I read these accounts over and over of how many times Jesus told the disciples what was going to happen, and they were clueless. And and, and honestly, I don't don't really get it. I don't understand why. I mean, it wasn't like he was hiding the truth. He was speaking parables to everybody else, but to the disciples, he was telling them straight up, I got to go to Jerusalem. They're going to kill me in three days. I'm going to rise again. I mean, he's laying it all out. And in this passage that I just gave you, he he takes Peter, James, and John a little further into the garden, and he says, I really need you guys to pray with me because what I'm about to go through, it says he, he was grieved in his soul, and he cried out, Father, is there any way to do what you want to do? Is there any other way? And he didn't even wait for the response because he knew it. And he said, nevertheless, his soul, his flesh was, was, was understanding he's about to be beaten. He's talked about being beaten, but talking about it ain't the same as experiencing it. Right, right. The crown of thorns. He knew they were coming. The spit in his face. He knew it was coming. The, the ripping of his clothes and the tearing of his back. He knew it was coming. But all of a sudden he says, He comes and wakes up the disciples the third time, and he says, get up, it's enough, my hour has come. And and it's it's powerful, it's a a statement of of fact. And you know, just before that, he he had said, Peter, wake up and pray, because temptation's coming. See, just a little bit earlier, before they got in the garden, Peter had, had already declared, made bold statements. I, 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 Peter, will not be like these other disciples. When, when the problem comes, you know, he's patting his, his sword. I will die with you. And, and Jesus said, oh, Peter. <laughs> oh, Peter. I mean, has he ever spoken to you like that? He has me. Oh, George. 
your big talk right here, but what about over here? What about in the middle of the night? What about when you're not standing in front of your congregation? What about when the enemy comes and throws all these things against your mind and you have friends that die from the same disease you have and, and now it's attacking your mind? What, what about then? Will your declaration be as strong? And you begin to press in to do. See, Jesus was trying to get Peter. Jesus didn't want Peter to deny him, but he knew he was. His, his spirit was willing. But his flesh was pretty weak. Anybody besides me and Peter have weak flesh? Thank you. Otherwise, I was going to stop and do an altar call right now. (laughs) Rise up, verse 42, let us be going. Rise up. For us to be about the Father's business and not allow distractions in these last days to hinder us from doing what God's called us to do. We have to be people of prayer, people of worship, people of the word. Amen? Amen. Say amen real loud like you meant it. We have to be. We can't just talk about it on Sundays. I can't stand up here and be a cheerleader every week and say, come on, we're reading through the Bible again. We're reading the word because the word, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. That's why the Lord wants us in the Word, because when we're in the Word, we're growing in a deeper relationship with the person of Jesus the Christ. And when we stay out of it, then we become consumed and filled with with sadness and depression and heaviness and mental uh, health issues and and our, our, our flesh gets weak and we start being moved by what Everybody's saying on the news about our world, and, and, and then all of a sudden, you're not accomplishing anything. I believe spirit-filled believers should be making a difference in our world. Amen? Amen? I believe our lives should make a difference. Not that we just come to a building on Sunday morning, drive, everybody sees our cars in the parking lot, everybody sees us come in, and they don't know what we're doing in here, but, but are we making a difference when we leave here in, in our workplace, in our neighborhoods, where we shop, where we play, where we do life? Are we making a difference? Is our life lining up? And, 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 and my prayer for us, listen, nobody is here by mistake. Nobody's here by accident. You weren't, bo- you say, well, you don't know what happened to me. And I, you know, I was born out of this and that. And, and, and I lived in foster homes and, and I, I, or I lived with parents that were, no, none of that mattered. None of that, none of that has to impact your destiny when you know who you are in Christ Jesus. When we get full of the word of God, we get healed from our past, healed from our past, so that it does not dictate our future. It doesn't determine what we're going to do and what we're going to accomplish. Why? Because our hour has come and we're not going to allow distractions to keep us from being what God has called us to be. Romans chapter 13, I'm going to read this, verse 11. Besides this, you know the time That the hour has come for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believe. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us, look here, cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality, sensuality, not in quarreling or jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and, listen to this, make no provision. Make no provision. That means if you've been making provision, stop making provision for the flesh. Stop. Just stop it. Just stop it. Put on Christ. Because see, you're not going to put on Christ and walk in the fullness of who he is, in the joy of your salvation, freedom, worship, man, prayer, just your life's being radically impacted. You're not going to do that and both commit adultery at the same time. You're not going to end up in some horrible sexual sin at the same time. 
You're not going to divorce your spouse at the same time. I don't care what. I mean, so many believers line up and head to the divorce courthouse thinking it's okay and it's all right. And I know many of you have suffered through divorce and God's healed you and God's set you free. And some of you had, had, had nothing to do with what you went through. Some of you had some of it. Some of you, it was before Christ. The good news is God forgives us of all of it. But we don't want that to continue on in our life or in our children's life or in our grandchildren's life. We got to break that curse. I, I mean, I'll, I'll just put my, my life story up next to anybody in this room when you start going, woe is me, but pastor, you don't know. <laughs> what? My parents married and divorced each other three times. <laughs> At 50 years of age, I found out that I had a brother that my mom had delivered in between the middle of our family kids. I was 50 when I found out that I was born on his birthday. I found out at 50 that my mom married somebody else before she married my dad. And then my dad, after mom, he married two more women. You think I didn't have some curses to break? That, that's not a part of my destiny. That's not who I am. That's not who my wife and I are. It doesn't matter what our past is, what the enemy has brought. It matters who we are in Christ Jesus. Destined. Everyone in this room, listen to me, whether you believe it or not, you're destined for greatness in God. And the only thing that keeps you from getting there is your own unbelief. And your own unbelief is because you don't live in the word and the spirit and worship like you should. And you allow distractions. Ah, oh, this is good this morning. I don't know about y'all, but it's good for me. Is that in your notes? No, it's not in my notes. <laughs> See, when Jesus came to that place, he declared, my hour has come. I think that we come as believers to a place in our spiritual lives after we've walked with the Lord for a season and we've begun to discipline our life and we're no longer just saved by grace. Don't you just love hanging out with people that are just, I'm just, a, I'm just an old rotten sinner, just barely saved by grace. What are you reading? Who are you listening to? I was a sinner and I was saved by grace, but the Lord didn't save me by grace so I could keep sinning. Save me by grace so I could rise up and be the man of God. You could be the woman of God. You could be the young person of God that God's called you to be. He's called us. And he's graced us. So if you're one of those that pray every night, Lord, forgive us of our many sins, stop sinning. It's real simple. I mean, the Bible says if you've been stealing, don't steal anymore. Been fornicating, stop fornicating. You've been quarreling, stop quarreling. You've been backbiting and talking bad about your pastor, stop. <laughs> or your connect group leader. I'm just throwing that in. I don't think anybody in here is guilty of that. I, I feel the love by faith. So the second part, Jesus said, the hour has come, my time has come. There's no more time for all the other stuff. See, I believe as much as Jesus, when he said, my hour has come, I believe there comes a point in time in our life when Holy Spirit says, I'm taking you from here to here. Amen. And there's no more time for some of that stuff you used to be involved in. Amen. This is for somebody this morning. Hear me. You, 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 you've, just, you've gone to church. You did the church thing. You did the connect group thing. You did all the things. And then you got tired and you just kind of put it in neutral. And the Lord's saying, it's raining. I'm going to preach till it stops raining. Amen. Amen. But I think there comes a time when the Lord might say to you, do you want to go to greater things? And hear me, it's not about your age. I was talking with somebody the other day and we were talking about retirement. 
It's such a non-biblical word. It really is. The only reason we should retire from working a job that we've had to work is so that we can work a job now that we want to work, that we want to be busy for the kingdom of God. The worst thing in the world is to quit work and go, look, I had to stay home for a year. It about drove me to want to go to heaven, <laughs> like talking to the Lord about, will you want to take me home? Because I'm thinking, if this is all there is, television, listen and watching somebody else's life. Retirement's about being busy now. And you know what? You should be at a place when, you're, when you get there that, that financially, you don't have to, you, you, you set things straight. You got things in order. You've got something set aside for your children and your children's children. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching the word there. So now you can give yourself to doing kingdom 100%. Maybe go on a missions trip. Maybe come volunteer down at the church, say, Pastor, what do y'all need done? Man, that'd be amazing. What can I do to serve the body of Christ? I'm not just here to wait around, grow older until I die. That's not how I want to die. I want to be just busy and all of a sudden just one day just collapse. And they say, what's wrong with pastor? I ain't got no strength left. I'm done. Then the Lord can take me home. Don't look at me like that. I mean, why sit around waiting to die? Why not just get so busy that you go for a walk with the Lord like Enoch did? And he says, yeah, no, it's too far to go back. Come on with me. I'll drop you right here. And they can do with your body whatever they want. Let the dead bury the dead. Amen? Amen. Hey, man, once I am out of here, y'all can do whatever y'all want with this. Burn it, fry it, put it in the ground, do whatever you want. I don't really care because I won't be home. I mean, I'm going to be out of here in the presence of Jesus. But until I do, I need to keep this automobile running. Amen? Amen? Need to grease it and oil it and put some gas in it. Take care of it. Why? Because this is what I have as a tool to be about the Father's business. And we are called to be about the Father's business. Don't allow distractions to keep you from that. Our time on earth is very limited. I don't care what you think. You're 20 and you think, oh, I got my whole life. Yeah, you do. And it's going to go by that quick. You're going to wake up and have grandkids all around your feet and, and busyness, and you're going to go, what happened? I, 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 I was just 22. I just got married. I, I just had a kid. What do you mean I got 10 grandkids? I don't even have a grandbaby anymore. I mean, it just flies by. I, I'm looking at, Lord, these next few years, I want to be about your business. I want to accomplish something. I want to do something I've never done before. I want to dream a dream that's bigger than my reality. Because my reality has nothing to do with his reality. God has called us. You know, right now, I've, I, I still have this dream vision. I've been to, I, I don't know how many nations of the world, been on 171 missions trips. I don't believe I'm through and over. And yet right now, every nation that I um, believe I'm called to has a requirement that you have to be vaccinated. And I have a personal conviction that I'm not getting vaccinated. So I'm having to say, Lord, this is your problem. Because if you spoke to me and gave me a peace to get vaccinated, I'd do it. But I have no peace, and every time I pray, you ain't talking. So therefore, you're going to have to make a way for some of these gates to open for me to do what you have called me to do. Because not only am I supposed to go, but a whole bunch of y'all are be, supposed to be going with me to Cuba, to Honduras, to Peru. Kenya, Uganda, I know, go ahead, start throwing them out there. Helga's screaming Uganda and Hell screaming Kenya. Hell won't leave me alone about Kenya. China, I don't want distractions. 
I don't want to look at what the news is saying right now and say, well, Lord, you must be done with me then because I, I can't go to any of these places. No, the Lord's not saying that. He's saying, prepare yourself. Make sure your passport's in, in order. Make sure you've got some money put aside. Make sure you, you're, you're ready to go when I say go. Well, Lord, when are you going to say go? He said, you'll know the door will open. And there are people hungry, not just overseas, right here in Gainesville. See, we don't start overseas. Our Jerusalem's here. So we're looking for opportunities and ways every day. And, and in this house now, we're beginning to do things we haven't done before. We have doors opening to us. Franco this week spoke four times at Newberry High School, four hours in a row Hallelujah. to high school students. Well, I thought you couldn't do that. Well, you can if you got a principal that is not afraid and opens doors. He spoke to the Santa Fe basketball team and their coaches this week, preached the gospel. Well, I, th I thought we couldn't do that. I believe God's going to open doors when we stop believing the distractions of the world that they tell us we can't. We say, in Christ, I can do all things. So I don't know how it's going to happen. But some of you need to start in your neighborhood, praying and believing for your unsaved neighbors. Do you want to get to heaven and find out somebody in your neighborhood was just waiting and wondering why you went to church every week, but you never invited them? Ooh, let it get real quiet in here. Because it's the truth. It's like I shared with that story last week about that beautiful young 30-year-old lady that leapt out of a high-rise building to her death. Had no one, had no one ever told her that she doesn't have to live empty? Do you remember before you got saved how empty you were? Man, you filled that thing with everything you could imagine, didn't you? Man, drugs, alcohol, sex, everything that the world had to offer, and never did it satisfy. Never. You have a drink, you need another drink. Smoke a joint, you need another joint. Suzanne and I were riding down the road the other day, and some car came like this up beside us, and I looked over, and I said, honey, oh my gosh, this this gal in this car had her weed in her fingers like this, and she was jerking and screaming and singing and, and smoking, and, and as soon as that light turned green, man, she squealed off, and I thought, Lord, save everybody that's in her way, and I'm glad I was beside her and not in front of her, but empty and trying to fill it, we have the answer. Say this, I, I have, have the answer. Yes. So we got to keep our face set. We have to put off the old. We have to put on Christ. And listen to this. We don't have to be afraid or fearful to do what God has put in our heart to do. You need to write that down in your mental notes. I do not have to be afraid. When the enemy comes, reminded me of all my past and tries to bring guilt, condemnation, and shame on me, I remind the enemy, I remind the enemy what Jesus has already done for me. Therefore, there is now no condemnation to those who walk in Christ Jesus, who live by the Spirit and not after the flesh. How many of y'all did one thing bad before you got saved that you really regret? Let me see your hand. Everybody, a whole bunch of stuff. Some of it, when you even think about it, you start shaking. And you go, God, I was stupid. <laughs> Y'all do, years ago, I preached a powerful message here at The Rock over at the South Campus. Huge title. It, it was titled, Sin Makes You Stupid. <laughs> His powerful message. Somebody took my picture and put it on a t-shirt when I had a big fro and said, sin makes you stupid. Now, I don't know what they were saying. Was my hair result of stupid or was sin stupid? But 
Anyhow, I still have that t-shirt hanging in my closet. All right, point three, and I have a few minutes to get into this. Point three is to focus on your destiny. Spend some time, put some effort into what you think God is speaking to you about for your future. That's why we need one another. Let me just throw it in here again. We need small groups. You need to be in a connect group. Men need men. That's why Wednesday night was so important as we gathered. And I was so impressed Wednesday. We had all, excuse me, all these teenage boys, several rows of them. And I just had a blast looking at them and watching them, listening, and, and just enjoyed watching them worship as we were worshiping, thinking, thank you, Jesus. I didn't have that when I was their age. But, but here they are on the front row, the second row, and they're not ashamed of Jesus, and they're not ashamed of Jesus in front of their peers, their friends. That's, that's because moms and dads have been teaching them and imparting into them. They're not getting that from the iPads or from the news. They're getting that because there are moms and dads that are pouring into their life. Why? Because they're concerned about their kid's destiny. We have a destiny in Christ Jesus, that once we have been saved and redeemed and healed and delivered and established and we start our prayer life and our word life and our worship life, then all of a sudden we have the right and the ability with spiritual ears to hear what Holy Spirit's saying to us. And then we have to start focusing our attention, our eyes, our mind, our thought process on what does the Lord require of me? Not just want of me, what does he require of me? Franco preached a couple of weeks ago, I think maybe it was on a Wednesday night, about lordship. And, and in lordship, when we come to the place where Jesus is no longer just my savior, but he's my Lord, then we never have a right to say no Lord. Those two words don't go together. See, if Jesus is speaking to you, the proper answer is yes. Yes. Yes to getting up earlier to pray. Yes to getting up earlier to read the word. Yes to get up earlier to worship. This morning, as soon as my wife left early to come to huddle meeting, um, I jacked up the music in my house. Man, I turned that thing on full blast. I had my phone full up and I had my little stereo box full up. Uh, and man, I just set myself. I didn't know. Did y'all do Waymaker this morning? See, that was so prophetic because that was a song I wanted to hear this morning at home. And I, I jacked that thing up and listened to it like three times. Just speaking to myself, God, because this week Suzanne and I had, you know, a, a situation where we lost a friend. Um, much younger than I am, way too young to die. And it affects you. You know, it, it all of a sudden, you're like, well, they have the same disease I have, and they got diagnosed a year after I did, and, well, you know, why did their meds not work, and where, where was their faith? And, and we, we had an opportunity to uh, befriend this couple, and I never really knew where he was because he was always in so much pain that he didn't talk much and his wife did, but they were a precious couple. And, and I had to just remind myself, Father, that, that no matter what, what someone else did or went through or how they responded or what happened is not my destiny. I mean, I, I actually had to deal with, I said this to my kids the other, other night, I had to deal with, with feeling like I had to be careful how I shared my testimony with some of my friends that are going through multiple myeloma because what they're going through is just seems to be so much worse than mine. Matter of fact, one of the ladies who Suzanne and I are close with um, and this other couple, she called me a couple hours after she found out that our friend had passed away and, and she just started crying and she said, George, I don't understand. 
And so I, I just began to speak to her, and I, I began to tell her how I'm walking this out and how, how I have to walk this out, because if I don't walk it out this way, the way the Lord has instructed me to walk out, then in my flesh, in the natural, the enemy's going to have an open door into my mind, into my spirit, and my heart, and into my confession, and therefore, it's going to become null and void. And so I, I have to live a certain way and proclaim for me. But I said to them the other night, I, I, I almost, I had to be careful when, when we were talking and I said, well, how are you doing? And she said, well, I ask you first. And I said, no, I want to hear you first. And when she got through, I mean, I was so weighted down in my chair for my friend because she's not just dealing with multiple myeloma, but now all of a sudden she had a tumor come up in her neck and another one in her sternum and she had to go through radiation and she's in the hospital for seven days in December and nine days in January. She's go and she, in the midst of it, she's trying to be upbeat, but she just said, George, sometimes I just want to quit. And I said, oh, no, 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 you cannot think that way. And I just began to speak the word over her and, and encourage her. And so when she finally said, well, how are you doing? I was just like, you know, God is good and he's faithful and, and, and I'm back to preaching. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, I still have my days and I still have my shakes sometimes. And I still have, you know, fatigue in the afternoon. I, I mean, I was actually looking for something to say that would go, you know, well, I'm not just, I'm, so I said, well, I'm not in remission yet. But I said that out of one side of my mouth and the other side says, I don't care if I, they ever declare I'm in, in remission or not, I'm going to live and not die and do the works of the kingdom of God. Because it's, it's, a, it's a declaring what God said, not what I say or not even what I'm thinking. What does the word of God have to say? So we proclaim that and focus our life on the things that God has for us. What is your destiny? What is God calling you to do? What is he calling your marriage to, to be a part of? How about, you know, in, in the latter days of your life, instead of just fighting and, and getting tired of fighting, so you just quiet all the time, you, you don't ever, how about as a husband and wife, you just start saying, hey, w what could we talk about doing that we've never done before for the kingdom of God that's bigger than anything we've ever thought about? And you start getting a purpose worth fighting for in your marriage. So you're not fighting against each other. That is good. Because the enemy is always going to give us something to fight over. When I'm by myself, I fight with me sometimes. I, I, you know, she's not around. I just like, what are you thinking? I don't know. You know just have an argument with yourself. But, but. But the kingdom is so much bigger than that. So focus on our destiny. To focus on your destiny, you first need to know what the Father has destined you for. Ooh, that's good. To focus on your destiny, you first need to know what the Father has destined you for. To know what you're destined for, you have to know his word. And you have to believe that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. You have to believe it. I can, I can walk side to side and look up and down these aisles and look you face to face, and I can tell you of those of you that don't yet believe that you are something special for God, and he has a purpose for your life because our face shows it. Your face can change. When you get so full of God's word, it starts consuming you. I'm going to read you some scriptures that have to do with what I'm talking about. First one, familiar. You know it. I love it. Jeremiah 29, verse 11, for I know the plans. This is the Lord speaking. I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. If I could take the time and call each of your names out and say to you, quote this scripture, that's exactly what God said for you. It's not just generic. It's just not generic for the whole church. 
I quote this to me. I quote this to me. I declare this in my life. George Brantley, you are not a mistake. God thinks about you and smiles. Well, that's arrogant. No, it's not, because it's not about me. Anything good in my life is because I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Anything good in your life is because you've been redeemed. So when he looks at you, he's not looking at you. He's looking at the blood of his son that was paid for you to be righteous. So that you can stand in front of a mirror and say, good morning, righteous man of God. You can even add some spunk to it, you know. Good morning, you righteous woman of God. You're righteous. And you say it till you believe it. You ever sat in the mirror and looked and started laughing? I have. But you say it until it becomes life to you. That he declares over you that any evil that's coming against you, God says he'll reverse it on your behalf. He'll take what the enemy meant for bad and he'll turn it for for good in your life. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. I want the good, the acceptable, and the perfect. I want it all. But how do you get there? You don't get there by wishing. You don't get there by just going to church once a week on Sunday, never read the Word, never pray, never worship, come back next Sunday, and if pastor's good enough, he can get it in me, then I'm going to take it. No, I'm never going to be that good. There's no pastor that good. Jesus, for all you religious-minded people, was not that good. He wasn't. He said... I'm going to the Father so he can send the promise of the one who will reside in you forever, who will teach you and help you and comfort you, tell you the things you need to know, help you to get there. We need the Holy Spirit. We need it. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. This morning I saw a picture of Sharon Bob that my niece Carrie sent me back when they were young. Bob had hair and Cheryl was blonde. And Carrie said, I miss them so much. And I said, I do too, and I can't wait to spend eternity with them. They're, they're, they're not, I don't sit around and weep. I rejoice at every memory I have of my sister and brother-in-law and that they are in the presence of Jesus and they're a part of that great cloud of witnesses that's going, come on, George. Come on, don't quit on us. Come on, you can do this thing. Don't quit. That's what your cloud of witnesses are doing. Woo, I got chill bumps on that one. They're praying for you. They're declaring over you. They're not floating around in heaven with little angel wings just, oh, I wonder what I'm going to do today. They're a part of a great cloud of witnesses that are making intercession for you and I. You ever think about heaven seriously and it's just like way too much you can't even comprehend? All I can comprehend is there are a cloud of witnesses that are going, come on. Y'all got this. COVID ain't got y'all. Y'all got this, man. Y'all got this. Come on, y'all. Y'all got this. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Y'all got this. Come on, y'all got this. They are cheering us. They are praying. They're standing in the gap. Everybody that you've ever loved that's gone before you, stop weeping. Weeping's for just a little while. Then you start rejoicing. Because they are a part. They're still a part of our lives. My pastor, Pastor Wall, he's still a part of my life. Sometimes I talk to him. <laughs> oh, look at y'all's faces. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not hearing voices. Well, that's not true either. I do hear his voice. I mean, sometimes it's, I can hear his voice. I can hear when I say a 
Apostle, I'm going through this and I really don't know what to do. I hear his voice. Well, son, you just want to pray in the Spirit and do what the Spirit says. I hear it. It's like a recording. And it's clear. And he's probably laughing right now at me. But his voice and the voice of the righteous that have gone before us. Man, whoo. They're a part of our destiny. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 7. But grace. Say but grace. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. All has to do with focusing our lives on the destiny in which we have been called. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. In all these things, in everything, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. You're more than a conqueror. John 15, verse 16. I love this. Jesus speaks and he declares, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. I chose you. Hear me this morning. I'm pointing at you. Jesus chose you. When you receive Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, it's because he already chose you, been knocking at your heart's door, Holy Spirit's been there, he's been preparing you for that moment when you would say, Lord, not my will any longer, your will be done, I'm gonna serve you. He chose you and he appointed you. He gave you something to do with your life. Don't ever say, well, I'm just this. That's a lie against God. You're not just anything except the redeemed of the Lord. And God saw such in you that he gave his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross so that you could receive his life, his purpose, his destiny. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose... For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. We're going from glory to glory. Our latter is going to be greater than our former. When we obey the voice of of the Father and say, Lord, your will be done and accomplished in my life. So this week, I want to encourage you, allow Holy Spirit, if you got distractions in your life, start working towards getting them out. Ask Holy Spirit to help you. Some of you men, you need other men. Go to them. Submit. Commit to them. I need your help. I need your covering. I need your accountability. Some of you women, you need other women in your life, positive women, women that speak faith and life and hope, not just sit around and listen to woe is me. Don't, don't get caught up in that woe is me because it'll destroy you. But, but, but get a hold of those who will help you so you can deal with every distraction, put it behind you. Why? So you can focus on the destiny that God has. I don't know about y'all. I'm pretty excited about 2022 and whatever God has for us. I'm excited about talking to Pastor Jose and say, what can we do as a team? What can we do here in Gainesville? What can we do in Peru? If God opens the doors, what can we accomplish? I don't want to just go on a mission vacation. I want to go do something like we did last time we were in Peru. We worked our bootays off. (laughs) We worked in the desert and it was hot. Our medical team was amazing. Our people that went into the schools, amazing. Our dancers were amazing. Our people that brought water, fresh water. Think about it, 2019, whole little communities didn't have fresh water until we went and made available. I want my life to count. I believe you want yours to count too. Amen? 
bow your head for just a moment. Father, I'm asking you for us, help us to be honest with our own lives and every distraction that's hindering us from fulfilling the purpose and the destiny you have for our lives. I pray this day, tonight, this week, every morning in our devotions, every morning in our prayer time, every mor morning in our worship time, Father, that you'll just help us to deal with these things so that we can put them off, as the Word said, so that we can put on Christ. We can put on faith. We can put on hope. We can put on, Father, that which you have declared. You have already prepared ahead of time for us that we can live out Jeremiah 29, 11. We can walk out that which you have already destined us to do. Help us. Every one of us, as we hunger for that which you have for us. If you agree with that, would you just say amen? And would you keep your head bowed for just a moment, believers, would you pray? I just want to speak to anyone in this room today that Jesus is not Lord of your life yet. Maybe you're watching online, maybe you're listening to it on a podcast this week. But this morning, Jesus is speaking to you. And there's something stirring in you right now. I, I know there is. Some of you in this room have such a God-given purpose that you have yet to even begin to scratch the surface because Jesus is not yet Lord of your life. He has a purpose, a plan, a future, and a hope. But it begins with you making a choice to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. This morning, I'm going to lead in a very simple prayer. And if that's you today, wherever you're sitting in this congregation or watching online, pray this prayer. And then afterwards, you come find one of these pastors up front. Find an usher. Find, turn to the person beside you and say, I, I just prayed that prayer in faith today. Because Jesus wants to begin a new thing in your life. But it begins with you humbling yourself, acknowledging Jesus as a son of God and receiving all that he did on the cross for your benefit so that he is the door that you go to the Father with. If that's you, pray this prayer. The whole congregation is going to pray with us this morning. Pray this with me now. Father God, in Jesus' name. I humble myself and I acknowledge today that I need you, Jesus, to be my Savior. I'm a sinner. I have not surrendered to you and I have not walked with you. But today, I'm choosing you because you already chose me. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me heal me. Today, I'm choosing to surrender to you with my whole heart. I pray this, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's just give a ovation of praise and thanksgiving for those because the Lord has done something and some folks today in this place. All right. I love you guys. Look forward to next week. I'm actually, uh, y'all gonna have to bear with me because I'm actually gonna preach the next two weeks. I'm gonna preach four weeks in a row uh, before I take a break. But uh, after next Sunday, I'll be leaving uh, on Monday to go back to Little Rock for a week of testing and good reports, I believe, and meeting with my doctor. And uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, the next two weeks, uh, just allowing Holy Spirit to continue to talk to us uh, because his best is yet to come in your life. Amen. God bless you. Love you. Come on, put your hands together. Thank the Lord for that word through pastor this morning. And we want to reiterate, if you or somebody who responded, whether you're in this room right now or you're watching online or, again, you're listening on our podcast, we want to encourage you to reach out to us through our next step process that we have. Um, you were not created to walk this process by yourself. 
God has placed us. The word says he says the solitary one in a family. Not only does that in the natural, but he does that in the spirit. So we encourage you. We have opportunities for you to be discipled one-on-one, to get into groups with people, um, and just go through this process, man. I, I told one of my kids this week, I said, I've been reading this Bible a long time. So I got saved when I was a kid. I said, and it still has new and fresh things for me to learn because we need, we need it. We need to be discipled in the word constantly. So we encourage you to reach out and we would love to serve you in that way. Well, before we go, as always, we're going to give you an opportunity to continue in your worship with your tithes and your offerings. You've got envelopes in the backs of the chairs there. You can also write a check to the rock and make it clearly uh, marked for what it's for. And you can also give online and the instructions are right there for you. And this is our missions offering Sunday. So even as pastor was talking about in the message, this is one of the practical ways that we as a house give into the things that we believe God has for us overseas as well as here locally. Our admissions offerings are used every bit of it for those things to be a blessing. So as you pay your tithes and give your offerings, that's an opportunity you have this morning for that. So I want to pray over you as you give. Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity that we have today to hear and receive your word. And then we also thank you that in the practical, you are the supplier of all of our needs. You're the one who provides us with our resources, with our finances that are in our hands to take care of the things that we need to do in this life, Lord. So as an act of honor and declaring that you are first, we come paying our tithes, giving our offerings, Lord, as an act of worship and obedience and glory and honor to you, knowing that in all things, Lord, we're secure in you, God, as we walk in obedience as your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, a couple more things before we go. Growth Track's coming up. If you are new here, we encourage you to sign up. It's basically our new member class where we go over a few things with you, um, knowing God, finding freedom, discovering purpose, and making a difference. I also encourage you, if you've been here for a while and you haven't been through Growth Track, to go through it and kind of get a feel for how we're bringing people into our house as an on-ramp to know a little bit about us and then finding out where they're called to be. If this is their church, then where in, in this church are you called to, to be set and where you called to belong? So that's coming up. begins on March 6th. Make sure you sign up at the rockonline.org slash um, growth track. And then we have water baptisms coming up on March 2nd. This is another area and another place where it's a serious thing and a blessed thing for you to be able to be baptized. You know, in baptism, you're confessing that Jesus is Lord. You're declaring that he has what you are putting on in your life. And then you're also declaring that you are now a part of his body, the church here. So um, if that's you and you have any more questions about that, or if you want to get signed up, you can sign up online for that or contact us at the church office for that. Uh, This Wednesday, we got family night, and my man, Pastor Hector, the Dominican sensation, is bringing the word. I don't know if he likes being called that, but I call him that because he's my boy anyway, so you know, it just is what it is, man. You got to receive it. So he'll be bringing the word the next couple weeks. So we're looking forward to that. That's at 630 Wednesdays. Um, and then this Friday, we don't have that listed up there on the screen for you, but the young adults will be meeting here at 630 on Friday. We're going to have a game night with food provided. The only thing you got to do is bring a dessert. Like I told you, first week, we'll feed you. Third week, you got to bring some. Okay. If you're new, though, don't bring anything. Just be our guest. All right. But this Friday, 630, we're going to be here. And then you guys go ahead and stand with us. Lastly, if you're new here, um, we'd love for you to stop by the kiosk and, um, and just, just meet with our hospitality team, get your name with them, and we can see how we could serve you. If this, again, if this is the place God has for you, we want to serve you, be a blessing to you. And if not, man, we want to pray with you and find out where that is. So just come by. We're glad you're here for a visit. And we also have a gift for you before you go. Everyone else, man, be blessed as you go. Don't stay up too late tonight for the Super Bowl or eat too much food. But enjoy your week. Have a great time. Go Rams. And, uh, oh, okay, I said that? Oh, sorry. All right. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.